standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail when the stelling storms of doubt and fear assail. By the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. On the last. Standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, Standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. All righty. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. All right. We're going to get to hear from the children's club here tonight. They're going to sing for us. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll listen to them sing. All right. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for another opportunity for us to gather together here. And Lord, we pray your blessing on our service this evening. May you meet with us. Give us just what we need here in the middle of the week. And bless the children now as they sing tonight. And may they sing from their heart. May they sing as unto you, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may be seated.
Great job. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's sing 488 together. 488. I was once a sinner, but I came pardoned to receive from my Lord a new name and glory. 488. Let's sing that first together. I was once a sinner, but I came pardoned to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that he always kept his word. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story, a sinner has come home. For there's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. I was humbly kneeling at the cross, fearing not but God's angry frown. And I saw that my name was written down. There's a new name. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home, for there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven. book is written, saved by grace, oh, the joy that came to my soul. Now I am forgiven, and I know by the blood I am made whole. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, oh, yes, it's mine. And the white-robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home, for there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine, oh yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven. Never more to Tonight's letters from the Maskies, missionaries to Nigeria. Dear praying friends, this year we held the Missions and Leadership Conference on September 27th through the 30th, and it was a great success. We also had pastors, their wives, and people attending from 12 other independent Baptist churches in Nigeria, and it was a great blessing and encouragement to all of us. Once again, we had Dr. and Mrs. Mike Cox from the States and missionary Mark Holmes from the Abuja speaking in the conference here in Port Harcourt, and God used them in a wonderful way. The preaching was powerful and convicting each day, and the altars were full with many decisions for Christ. The Sunday morning service was especially great with 938 in attendance, 66 people receiving Christ as their Savior, and 26 were baptized. Our faith promise missions giving commitments also increased over last year, so we are praising the Lord for these good results. Last year, Dr. Cox had to cancel his trip to Nigeria at the last minute because his father, who is close to 100 years old, became very ill. This year, it looked as if the same thing would happen, but would happen again, but because many people were praying, his father's health improved enough for them to come. We thank God for answered prayers. Prayer requests are other church plants in the Eagle Island, Igruruta, and Omoku churches and pastors are all doing fine. However, there have been some difficulties, especially in Omoku, where there has been some community clashes and even loss of life. Please pray for peace in that place and for the provision and growth of all of these new churches. Uh, 
we are looking at two locations right now for new church plants, and we need to raise about $10,000 to purchase land. Please pray for God's provision. Once again, thank you for making this ministry possible by your prayers and support and gifts. You have been a great encouragement to us. God bless you all. Yours for his service, the Maskies. All right, good report from the Maskies, and they're doing a great job there in Nigeria. Get your prayer guide out, would you please? Anybody need one tonight? Put your hand up. The ushers will get you one right here. Brother uh, Linderman needs one, Brother Taylor. Anybody else? Anybody else get covered? Very good. All right. <clears throat> we'll start on the back, of course, with the coming events. And, of course, uh, are you tomorrow night down at CRC and Friday night here at the church. With uh, been having some great, great times on Friday evening here. And then Saturday morning at London and our soul winning and bus visitation at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Remember Saturday night, set your clock back and uh, fall back one hour on Saturday evening. Get an extra hour of sleep. How's that sound? All right. And uh, that's good. Some of you will be awake on Sunday morning. Amen. So we'll do that. Uh, that'll be Sunday. So we'll, uh, and then Sunday at 545, we'll have our organizational meeting for the turkey dinner Sunday. So uh, make sure you're here for that. And uh, we'll get that organized and ready to go. The flyers are here and uh, they're ready to go. And uh, we have 20,000 of them to pass out. So uh, you, you can take some and uh, sign them out when you take them so we can account for them, all right? And uh, there's a clipboard in there, just sign your name. And they're, they're turned, they're in the pile, but they're turned every 50. So you'll know uh, how many to take, okay? And uh, I think you just, you know, take what you know you'll pass out and then come and reload, okay? Don't, don't take out 600 of them and then they end up in your car and get bent up and, you know, or other places and you forget about them, all right? So uh, just take what you can, get them out, come back and reload, okay? And uh, let's, we'll begin working on that and we'll get, we'll get hard after it on Saturday, but uh, you feel free to take some that's down there this evening if you'd like, okay? The praise reports. Uh, had a wonderful 10th anniversary Sunday. It was a wonderful time, and uh, we have enjoyed that book so very much and uh, spent a lot of time looking through that. And, uh, again, we deeply appreciate all the time that took for that to be put together. The meal was delicious. Uh, I'm not who made the lasagnas, but they were in incredible. And uh, just a great, great time. Thank you so much. We, we really enjoyed that. And then uh, 61 last Thursday at the RU Inside, and uh, 18 were saved. Uh, down there, we had 15 at uh, London. This, I think, might be just a little bright. Brother Dean, Brother Dave, somebody. Just don't, not a lot, but I think I'm getting a little bit of a feedback on that, all right? Um, 15 at London on Saturday. And then I want to share something with you. We, some of you got on the prayer line, uh, Dave Chaffin's uh, cousin named Karen, who had cancer surgery, um, had a tumor removed from between her ear and her eye. It was pretty deep in her head. And uh, they had surgery, I think it was last Thursday morning, and we sent that through the, the prayer chain. And uh, Brother Chaffin called me this week. So he was uh, in a room when the doctor came in. Uh, in fact, he just called me, it was Monday or Tuesday. And um, the doctor just came in to tell her what a miracle that she was. And he said we were, he was in there operating and two other surgeons with him. And he said, I've, I've got to go deeper to make sure I get all the tumor. But if I do that, she's never going to talk again. He was going into that part of the brain that controls speech. And the one doctor said, you've got to do it. I mean, that, uh, that's uh, just, uh, you've got to get it all. The other surgeon said, well, she can always learn sign language and communicate with people that way. And so he went for it. And they got all the tumor, as far as they know. And, uh, but uh, the miracle is she's sitting up talking, carrying on conversations, and uh, like nothing ever happened. And he said, he told Dave, he said, I was in the room. He said, he said I cannot explain that. And, and Dave said, he said, well, we can. We believe that was God, that uh, Jesus did that. And he said, but I'm a doctor, and I don't have a scientific explanation for it. And... Uh, and so that was just, he was just praising God for that. And uh, we should too. So I want to share that. And uh, that was a real, real blessing. All right. So uh, continue to pray for the church ministries and the different church requests there, the, the folks on our health list. Um, 
on the cancer list, add, add a name, Susan Treadway. Would you please, Susan Treadway? There's a sister-in-law to, to uh, Carol Treadway. And most of you know Carol comes on Sunday. And uh, she has lung cancer and uh, some very serious. So uh, put her on there and please pray for her. I know they would appreciate that. All right. Continue to pray for those in authority. And... Um, Pray for these on the salvation list and, of course, our military and unreached people groups that we pray for uh, regularly. And then our missionaries, uh, which are highlighted by the Maskies uh, in Nigeria. All right. Brother Paul Label, if you'd like to come this evening, I'd like you to lead us in our prayer tonight, if you would. And uh, he'll lead us audibly in our prayer. And uh, we pray along silently uh, with him as he leads us audibly and uh, be praying uh, for uh, these needs that we've mentioned here tonight and pray for the services coming up on Sunday that God will meet with us and give us a great month in November all right as we prepare for the dinner day on November 15th all right brother John let's pray our heavenly father we thank you for this day that you've given us thank you for the way that you've brought us in tonight to hear the word of God preached and we do thank you for the word of God that you've preserved over the years and brought over in our English language where we can understand it in our own language. And we ask that you would uh, continue to help those that are unreachable because they don't have a Bible. We pray that you would help those that are in involved in that, that they'd be able to get a Bible as quick as possible so that they can know and learn about the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we do thank you for the privilege we have of having this church here that you've raised up and we thank you for the pastor that you brought here and we pray that you bless him and his family in every way that that is possible and then help him through any trials and tribulations he may be going through and we ask that you'd be with the members of the church that you'd help each one of us to to uh, be able to make it through the trib tribulation and, and the trials that we have in our daily lives and we pray that you'd help us to be able to call on Jesus first before we do anything and make sure that he's leading us in the right direction and the right way to go and we do thank you for the, the uh, uh, many uh, people that have come to know Jesus Christ in the prison ministry through the effort that's put forth and we do thank you for those the men and, and, and thank you for the word of God that we can take into the prison and then also, for those that come in here on Friday evenings, we pray that you'd help them and, and continue to bless. And uh, we thank you for those that are, are working in that area. We thank you for our ministries that we have and uh, throughout the church, the, the nursery and, and also Sunday school teachers and teachers and, uh, during Sunday school and church. And we ask that you'd help us. The bus ministry as those that go out doing running bus. We pray that you'd help them. But we see more souls uh, raised uh, and brought in and saved through the bus ministry. And we ask that you'd help those that are doing it. You'll give them good health and that they'll be able to continue to do it. We ask you for the, the offerings that we need here at the church to do the things that we feel that you want us to do. And we ask that you'd help us with this upcoming uh, Thanksgiving meal that we're going to prepare. And we ask that each person would uh, help and uh, chip in and uh, do, what, do what they can do and we pray that, that we'd have the money to continue to do that throughout the years and we ask that you'd be with those that have cancer we pray that you'd help them and give them comfort that they need through this uh, cancer that they have and also that, that you should uh, also work a miracle in the, uh, the hearts of others not only, done, not only that one girl but others that would be able to see uh, God work in miracles and we just pray that you'd uh, be with our missionaries that are in, around the world that we support and, and uh, all those that are out there. We just pray that you'd continue to help them, that you'd give them the wisdom and the knowledge that they need as they uh, start, set out to serve you each day. And They may not have a, a pa pastor there, but we pray that you'd be able to guide them and direct them and give them the, that that they need throughout the, the day. And we ask that you would be with those others that are on our list that are unsaved. We just pray that someone would be, you'd lead someone to the door and that they'd be able to knock on the door 
and take the Bible and show them how they could get saved and that that would change their life and their heart would be changed that they want to come in and serve you here and we thank you for that. We thank you for the word of God that we uh, hear each and every day that, uh, that the church doors are open. We pray that you'd uh, help us to understand it and be able to use it in our daily lives and we do pray now for the offerings that uh, we will take tonight and we'll be able to uh, take that and use it to glorify your name. And we do pray that you'd bless us and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 538, 538. All praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's all stand together one more time as we sing 538 together on that first. All praise to him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave his son for man to die, that he might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing the last stanzas together. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's sing that last all together. His name shall be the Counselor, the Mighty Prince of Peace. On that last together, his name shall be the Counselor. The mighty Prince of Peace, of all his kingdoms conqueror, whose reign shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of 
of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. All right. You can be seated, and the ushers will come, and we'll get our offering now tonight. Give us the Lord is blessed and prospered you. And we'll ask the Lord to bless our giving this evening. Brother Abrams, lead us in our prayer. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. Uh, we're so grateful for uh, uh, just another day to worship you and uh, to be in your house. And uh, Lord, uh, we know that uh, you're here with us tonight. And uh, may you hear every prayer. And uh, May you answer uh, uh, those that are uh, sincere, and Lord, uh, uh, help us in uh, blessing the offering, and uh, just, uh, we love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Enjoyed Sally being home for a little bit, haven't we? And uh, home, I guess home's Florida now, but uh, it seems like it's good to have her back here. And I've uh, been visiting. She flies back out tomorrow and uh, goes back down to Florida. She's uh, taking reservations for January, February, and half of March, okay? And uh, go down and visit her in Florida, amen? So that was a blessing. Thank you. All right, Psalm 127, please, Psalm 127, 127 Psalm. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Father, add your blessing to the reading of this psalm here this evening. And Father, as we once again look at this particular passage, and as we look again about our families and the importance of you building our homes, Father, we pray that we'll have your help tonight. Give us understanding as we look into your word. Holy Spirit, be our guide and our teacher. Help us to rightly divide the word of truth. And Lord, help us to live the Bible we learned this evening. Please help us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. So help us to focus, help us to concentrate, and give us all ears to hear what the Spirit would say to His church this evening. And I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. This is a psalm, of course, David writes to his son Solomon, trying to teach him and instruct him um, about building. Now we know that it could be building the temple. Uh, God had told David, though David had it in his heart to build a, a house for God, 
God let him know, you won't build it, your son will build it. And so maybe he's reminding his son that except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. And it could have been the temple that he was referring to, but I think it's advice that we can take, not just from the temple, but from building a life and from building a family. And, and, and he's saying, if the Lord doesn't build it, your labor is in vain. Your labor will amount to nothing. I think what David's trying to teach Solomon is dependence on Him. H-I-M, God. Dependence on Him. You know, when the Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths, He's, he's saying what I'm trying to teach you is depend on God in everything. Depend on God in every situation. And isn't that faith? Isn't faith just depending on God and, and relying on Him in every situation? That's what faith is. And the just are to live by faith. And so he's teaching Solomon about that. Now there's three words we'll call our attention to this evening for our study tonight. The first word is build. Build. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Notice it is not labor that builds the house, it is the Lord that builds the house. It's the Lord first and then labor. And it is the Lord, listen, listen, it's the Lord that builds, it's not the Lord that helps build. Sometimes we're, we're, we're prone to say, I'm going to do this, God help me. Oh, we're, we're, we're in the wrong position. It says, Lord, I need you to do this. And, and, and I'll labor and I'll do what I can, but I need you to do this. And God will do the building. Without Him... I can do nothing. Oh, but look what I did. But it'll be nothing. It may seem like something now, but it will not end up as anything. It will amount to nothing. Now, so without Him, I can do nothing. But the Bible says in reverse, with Christ, all things are possible. There's in fact nothing shall be impossible when you're with Christ. But it all depends on whether it's going to be my strength or His strength. My power or His power. And so often it seems like there's a disconnect when it comes to wanting to do something for God in church, if it's Sunday school or junior church or sing in the choir or sing a special or teach a lesson. Oh, we, we beg God for His help. We want His help. But when it comes to being home... And building our home and being a husband and being a wife and being a father and a mother and rearing children, we kind of just kind of see, well, let's see. What does Dr. Phil say? What does Dr. Laura say? What is, and we, we go to all other kinds of places trying to figure out where do I get help on rearing these kids? That's quiet. Nobody said anything. Huh? Do you seek, hey, do you seek God in building your family? Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Do you seek the Lord to help build your family? Here's what most people do, verse number, verse number 2. It's vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so He giveth His beloved sleep. It's vain for you to rise up early. Hey, I'm working hard. You know, you know what it is when you rise up early and you stay up late? It's called burning the candle at both ends. We're familiar with that expression. What do you mean? Man, I'm doing everything I can do. I'm working as hard as I can work. And it still isn't working out. Still can't make ends meet. I still can't provide. I still can't do what I want. I, my kids still don't listen to me. I'm still eating the bread of sorrow. I don't seem to get anywhere. You will not obtain by trying harder. You understand what he's trying to teach Solomon? I, I, I thought of James 4 and verse 2. Listen carefully. James writes, Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war. Yet ye have not. Why not? Because you ask not. 
And God is saying, James is telling us the same thing that David was telling his son. Hey, you're not going to obtain by trying harder. You're not going to get the family you want. You're not going to build the, 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 the life you want. You won't build the church you want by just trying harder. You get it by asking. You get it by trusting more. You don't get it by trying harder. You get obtained by trusting more. You see, when you come to grips with the fact of, hey, listen, okay, it's a, it, the, the church. Jesus said, by the way, whose church is it? Yeah, it's, it's his. Who's the head of the church? Jesus Christ is. Okay? I, 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 sometimes I, 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 you know, we, we sometimes will say our church, and that's okay. We, we can take some ownership of it. It, it, it. We're part of it. But you know what I don't like? I don't like people say, well, your church. It's not my church. It belongs to Jesus Christ. And, and here's the thing. He said he'd build it. And, and if he doesn't build it, I labor in vain trying to build it. And I'll, and I'll get frustrated. And, and by the way, preachers get frustrated and preachers get ulcers and preachers get worrisome and preachers get health problems and uh, all kinds of things. And by the way, that's not just preachers. People get that when they don't trust God to build their family. When they don't trust God to take care of their life. When they don't trust God to take care of their situation. Notice what happens when you, when you let God do it. When you put your faith in Him. And you trust God to take care of the situation. And not you. When you decide, I'll just trust God more. And I won't just try harder. You know what he says? Look at that last, last sentence of verse number 2. For so He giveth His beloved sleep. Did you know when you leave it at God's hands, you can sleep at night? Oh, Pastor, I just lay in bed at night and my mind just keeps racing and going and I don't know what I'm going to do about this and I don't know what I'm doing about my kids. My, my kid's doing this and this one's doing this and I don't know about this problem and that problem, my husband and my wife. And, and my mind, I just can't shut it down. I can't sleep. Who's in control? You're, 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 you're trying harder but you're not trusting Him more. You put it in God's hands and you go to sleep. And you go to sleep. So He gives His beloved sleep. You leave it in God's hands, you don't need pills. You leave it in God's hands, you don't need, you can cancel the psychiatrist appointment. Okay? You have to leave it in God's hands. God said He'll take care of it. Ask yourself this question, and don't, don't say anything out loud. Don't poke anybody. Just, just ask yourself, how do I sleep? How do I sleep? And then ask yourself, am I building? Or is the Lord building? Who's, who's doing the building? So he giveth his beloved sleep. Remember, we're reading in Acts when Peter was in prison in Acts 12. They'd already taken James and beheaded him. And he was going to, right after Easter, bring Peter out and behead him. So Peter knew he's next. It's his last night he'll spend on earth. And remember, they're having a prayer meeting at John Mark's house, and they're praying for Peter to get out of prison. And so an angel is dispatched, and he comes and unlocks the prison doors, and he comes in to get Peter, and Peter's fretting and worrying and all upset, isn't he? No. Peter was sleeping. In fact, Sleeping so hard, he couldn't just wet, call him wake. He, the Bible literally had to kick him. I mean, he was out, out. Hmm? How could you sleep when it's your last night when you know they're going to cut your head off in the morning? Because huh? it's in God's hands, not his hands. So Peter said, I might as well get a good night's sleep. I'm getting more than a haircut tomorrow. And so he just rests. I think, I think that's what Daniel did in the lion's den. I believe he passed that night. God shut the mouths of them lions. I think he said, come over here, boy, give me a pillow. And I think he just laid down and took a nap. I don't think he had any, I don't think he had any worries at all. When you put your trust in God, when you trust Him to build it, 
you trust Him to take care of it, then you can sleep. And He gives you sleep. Sleep comes from God. So He giveth His beloved sleep. Just, just turn it over to Him. Sleep. All right? Build. Build. Number two, the second word is keep. Notice back in verse 1, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. You know, the great thing about it is, he said, Solomon, not only will God build it, God will keep it. Isn't that a good thing? God will keep, he doesn't just build it, he keeps it. He keeps the city, and let me, let me say, if the city isn't kept, the city oftentimes isn't kept because the home isn't kept. Godless homes produce godless citizens. That's where we've come to in our country. We were talking about this case that has made national news here the last day or so in South Carolina about this girl in class who was reprimanded for lack of attention or cell phone or whatever it was. And the teacher told her to leave the room and go to the office and she refused to go and they brought an administrator down and tried to persuade her to leave, and she still would not leave. So they called the police officer. They have police officers in the schools in South Carolina, and he came, and she refused to leave for him. Well, again, you, 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 don't, you don't tell a police officer, no, I'm not going to do this. And so he forcibly tried to remove her from the room. And in the contest of that struggle, the desk flipped over, and she is fine, there's no injuries, and he physically handcuffed her and removed her from the room. And consequently, he's been fired from his job, and, and there are all kinds of uh, lawsuits pending now uh, about this. Hey, whatever happened to if the teacher says you're disruptive, leave the room, you say, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Whatever, whatever happened to that? I was talking to a fellow the other morning who coaches a youth football league, uh, Brother Jason, and uh, I think it's uh, maybe fifth and sixth graders, or maybe, is there fourth, fifth, and sixth, or I don't know. It's, uh, it's uh, Anyway, he, he coaches football, and he told me one of the players that he has is a, is a, just was loafing. They were doing a drill, just a, just a drill where you, you throw the ball, they act like they intercept it, and they run 20 yards. But you're supposed to get it and run as hard as you can. And he said, the kid's just jogging. He's loafing. And I told him, I'm going to give you one more opportunity or you're going to really run to, to, to give it your best and, and run full speed. And the kid just caught it and just kind of jogged back. He said, okay, you're going to run. And the kid still just jogged. The sad thing is, the kid's dad is standing around on the sidelines watching it all. Doesn't do anything. And so he found it, well, I'll make... I'll make everybody. He said, I'll, I'll punish everybody. All of you are going to do up and down. You know, those are you, you get to get down and then come back up and jump. And it's, it's, he said, about 10 minutes punishing everybody for this guy's actions. Figuring maybe they'll put some pressure on the guy to give his best. And finally, when they're done, he stops and, and that fellow just, just got up, walked over, and just sat down right in the middle of the field. And dad just watches. There's a, there's a boy who's never been made to do anything and been told to respect authority. You see, hey, why are our cities in trouble? Because our homes are in trouble. Why is there godlessness and a lack of respect for life? Because that's the way it is in our homes. If you want to get the city right, you've got to get the homes right. And, and if, I, I should say this, if you want to get the city right, then you've got to get the churches right, but to get the churches right, you've got to get the homes right. If the homes aren't right, the church won't be right. Because uh, that's... The church. We make up the, the church. So the, the Lord says, I'll not only keep the city, I'll, I, will, I will keep that which I build. So if the Lord builds our life, He'll keep our life. If the Lord builds the church, He'll keep the church. If the Lord builds your home, He'll keep your home. He'll take care of it. Uh, 2 Timothy 1 and verse number 12. Some of you are familiar with that. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 12. Get there here in just a second. Paul writes, For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, 
and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Paul says, I know that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. It's so, it's so obvious to see, isn't it? Listen, if he, builds, if he builds my life, and by the way, if he gives me salvation, he saves my soul, he keeps my soul. It's so, it's so elementary, I think, to see that he'll keep me. Uh, he, he says, I know, I'm fully persuaded Paul was. You say, well, I think you can lose your salvation. Then you disagree with Paul. And by the way, you disagree with Jesus Christ himself, who said that they shall, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. In Jude, he says he's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne. Now, look at 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. In verse number 3. 1 Peter 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept, how? By the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. How are you kept? By the power of God. How am I kept? By the power of God. We're kept by His power, not our power. We're kept not by, not by what we do, but by what He does. So we, listen, we're the watchmen. Going back to Psalm 127, He said that the Lord will keep the city. Or the watchman watches in vain. In Psalm 127. So the Lord is keeping. It doesn't mean that I, I, I can't keep, but you know what I can do? I can watch. And Jesus said, we're supposed to be watching. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. When he talked about his return, he said, what I say unto you, I say unto you all, watch. So we can be watching. And so I have to watch. What are we watching for when we're building our family? We're watching for danger. We're watching for danger. And we cannot fail at this important task. And oftentimes we're failing because we're passing it off on other people. Parents are failing at this task. When teen pregnancy is up 500% in the last 30 years, when suicide among young people has increased 300%, and divorce has increased 700% just in the 20th century, many homes, both parents are working, dads are absent or just too busy, and TV's raising another generation with a lack of discipline and, and a, a lack of a work ethic. And, and, and where, where parents have failed and to be watchmen on the wall and guard their home against that which would hurt their children and their family. I don't have to tell you tonight, I hope I don't have to tell you the public school system is failing, the government school system. One of the top officials of the New Hampshire National Education Association said this, if children come to school with different values than those they are taught at school, teachers should encourage the kids to discard the lessons their parents are teaching. They call for diversity, tolerance. They, they, they rewrite the history books to be politically correct rather than truthful. They, are, they have removed God from the schools. They no longer teach America's spiritual heritage. It's, you're, you're in trouble if your children are in, in what's called public school. It's not public school anymore. You have to understand that. It is state-run schools. It is government schools. I was sharing with some people recently. I read that something that a, a parent posted. Their child brought this home with the common core curriculum that's in our schools. And... It was a math problem, and it said, Ruthie, on Tuesday night, read 28 pages. On Wednesday night, she read 101 pages. How many more pages did she have to read on Wednesday night than she read on Tuesday night? And the child put down 101 minus 28 equals 73. And by the way, for those of you who aren't, 
you know, or mathematically challenged, that is correct. And it was marked wrong. That's not correct. No, with, with common core math, you don't need the exact answer. That isn't what they want you to put. They want you to estimate. So 28 is closer to 30. So that's 30. 101 is closer to 100. So 100 minus 30 is 70. The correct answer is 70. Yeah. And she got that mark wrong. That's, that's you see, we're, we're getting where there's not going to be absolutes. The answer isn't the right answer. The answer is what we tell you the answer is. That's where we are. Don't rely on the school to take care of your kids. You're in trouble. Parents, be careful. You're, they, I'll, 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 I'll save that for another message sometime. Entertainment's failing. Entertainment pumps the idea of premarital immorality and alcohol into the kids' minds. Music and movies are full of profanity and revenge and lewd lyrics. Hollywood fills their mind with filth. And parents are renting the movies for them. Parents, you better know what your children are listening to. You better know what they're watching. You better know where they're going online. You better, you better know. You better keep track of it. You better understand the effect it will have on them. Doesn't do much good for you to try to get them off their rock music or their hip hop or whatever that glorifies the immorality and the, the vulgarity and all that while you listen to your country western about cheating and getting drunk and, and divorcing somebody. Whew, aren't you glad you came to church tonight, huh? Wow. Can I, can I help you, mom and dad? It isn't the government's responsibility. It isn't Hollywood's responsibility. It isn't the entertainment, entertainment industry's responsibility. It's not even the church's responsibility to rear your children. It's your responsibility. Now, now we want to help and we want to work together with you, but the main responsibility comes from mom and dad. We can't, we cannot undo, the church will never undo in an hour on Sunday morning or a couple hours on Sunday and, and maybe a, a, an hour on Wednesday night undo the other 165 hours a week they live with you. Won't happen. Keep, keep. Let the, ask the Lord to help you to, to the, listen, the Lord's going to keep and you watch. You be on the lookout. You try to watch for things. That's, and, and watch for things that could hurt. Watch for things that could harm. And you've got you've to guard your family against those things. They're out there. The devil is a roaring lion, seeketh about, uh, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. If you heard that there were escaped convicts on the loose and they were seen in the Grove City area, they were seen in your neighborhood and you'd make sure all your doors were locked and windows were locked. You'd make sure your house was secure that those men wouldn't find a way in. And if you have protection in your house, you would get it out and you'd be ready and armed if they tried to make an entrance into your home. Why? You're going to protect your family. It's important. You're going to be watching. You're going to be listening for any sound. Well, I tell you, I think in America, we've just become like the frog in the kettle and that's warmed up on us and we're, we're now boiling don't even realize it. It's come, it's come upon us. So we said build, we said keep. Let's do the third one. Blessing. Blessing. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is His reward. It's always hard when I read that verse. I want to say fruit of the loom, but it doesn't work, does it? As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them, and they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. You know what the blessing? The blessing, the blessings are our children. They're a heritage. 
You know what that means? It means that they belong to the Lord. And listen. How many, how many of you ever heard somebody say, we have to be careful not to love what God gives us more than we love God. Not to love the giver more than we love, or the gift more than we love the giver. But how many times have we heard statements like this? My children are my world. Nothing I, nothing I love more in this world than my kids. Wait a minute. Children are a heritage of the Lord. They belong to Him. The very first one to have your love and devotion still has to be God. You know, even our children can become idols. And we can put them ahead of the Lord. We dare not let that. We have to always remember that, that listen, if they belong to God, He, he loans them to us. And, and listen, it, it, sometimes you, you just take a walk. Sometimes take a walk over to Nationwide Children's. Take a walk through a cemetery. You find out sometimes people don't get to have those children very long. God lets them have them just a short time and takes them away. And sometimes it's just a year or two. Sometimes just a few months. But whatever time God gives you, you better be thankful for the time God gives you those children. The blessing, they're, they're from the Lord. They belong to Him. They're a heritage of the Lord. It says, the fruit of the womb is His reward. So I know they're given, my ch our children are given to us as a blessing. Better than silver and gold. Better than being famous. Is, is having children. You'll get more joy and satisfaction and contentment and happiness from your children than you will all your possessions combined. You will. Because you can have all the things to, listen, you can have all the things you want to live with. And all the, the luxuries that life could afford you. But boy, if your children are not living for God and your children are not walking and having a relationship with you, it's a, you, you'd trade it all just to be able to have a good relationship with your child. Just to see them walk in the ways of God. And I know I'm talking to parents in this room who are in that situation. So the Bible says here, notice verse 4, has arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Isn't that interesting? He likens our children to arrows. You know what's amazing? And, that, and that's because, listen, because as arrows, they're able to go further and do more than we ever could ourselves. Our children. The greatest weapons, some of the greatest weapons God gives us to fight the devil will be our children. Now, there's several things to make an arrow effective and for an arrow to be what, what, it, what it should be. There's three things that have to take place. An arrow, number one, has to be straight. Crooked arrows don't go so well. Any bow hunters in here? Huh? Anybody been bow hunting? Yeah, you just went bow hunting, didn't you, Jane? That's right. It doesn't work so good if your arrow's crooked. <laughs> you're, you're not going to hit what you're aiming for. You'll be, look out! You know, they don't, they don't get to the accomplished goal. So you have to keep them straight. Straight is, straight is the gate. Narrow is the way that leads unto life. The arrow, secondly, must be sharp. Must be sharp. Sometimes you feel like, man, my parents are too strict. My parents, they don't let me do anything. No, they're just trying to keep you straight. So that one day God can point you and use you and you'll be a straight arrow for Him. Thank God you have somebody who's hard on you. Thank God you have someone who's keeping you straight, trying to keep you from going crooked. And then God left straight now. Then an arrow will be sharp. 
How do you sharpen? How do you sharpen and how do you sharpen a child? You know, the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. You sharpen them with the word of God. And and you don't you don't when <clears throat> if you're sharpening an arrow and you're using the flint or whatever you'd use to sharpen that up, you know what? You don't ask the arrow how it feels. In fact, there's going to be some friction. There's going to be some times, I'm sure, it's not going to feel real good. But it's making you sharp. There's times you have to sharpen those children. and Use the Word of God to do it. They're straight, they're sharp, and then an arrow has to be directed. It has to be directed. It has to be aimed. Well, I just let my kids do what they want. I don't want to force religion on them, you know. Huh? You have to be aimed. Train up a child in the way that he should go. That means you've got to aim them in the right direction. You've got to point them in the right direction. Well trained. Listen carefully. Well trained, they will shoot the enemy. Well trained, they will shoot the enemy. Ill trained, they'll shoot and hurt the parents. And it hurts. It hurts. You take a wound, it hurts. Now the Lord says, the source of happiness here, happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. I don't know how much a quiver full is. <laughs> Did somebody say 12? Charles, got, yeah, got an amen from the Andersons. All I know is, he says, you're happier if you have a quiver full. What's that mean? Well, more children would mean more prayers. More children would mean more happiness. The more arrows you have in your quiver, the more secure you are. I feel more secure with, you know, Andy Taylor and his gun than Barney Fife with his. Barney only ever had one bullet. And usually fire that before he could get it out of the holster. I don't think I want that. And when it says something interesting there, it says, I'll speak with the enemies in the gate. That's interesting. It's a, it's a reference, I think, back to Genesis 24. I'm going to read this verse for you in Genesis 24, 60. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. The, the, the ones who possessed the gate were the rulers of the city. The ones who ran the place. Lot had that position in Sodom. He sat in the gate. So, saying, your, your, your children again, they're going to speak with the enemy's gate. They're going to be over their enemies. They're not going to succumb to the enemy. They're going to be over the enemy. That's what your children can do if you let the Lord build the house. If you let the Lord keep them and you watch and be a watchman like you, like you should. And then those blessings will come and you point them in the right direction. You sharpen them. You aim them, and they'll hit the mark. And they'll be, they'll do far greater things than you could ever do. Than you or I could ever do. You ought to desire great things for your children. You ought to desire great things for God for your children. That they could do far greater things than what you've been able to do for the Lord. Now whether your children or a blessing, or a burden, is up to you. Most of the time, can I say this? Most of the time, say, oh, these kids! Oh, what am I going to do? 
then, then, then they've done more training of you than you have of them. You, you have to train them in the way they should go. The Lord builds or we labor in vain. The Lord keeps or we watch in vain. And the Lord blesses by giving us children. Let's, let's, hey, why don't you ask God to build the house? Ask the Lord to build it. Ask the Lord to build your marriage. Ask the Lord to build your home. Let's, let's, let's ask the Lord to keep building His church. And, and we're just going to, uh, listen, we're going to labor. The Lord rewards us. First, uh, First Corinthians 3 says the Lord rewards every man according to his own labor. So we labor, but we're laboring understanding the fact that I'm only doing it in his strength. Because without him, I can do nothing. I have this power, this treasure in earthen vessel. His power is within us. The Spirit of God is within us to enable us to do what God wants us to do. So that we can work in His power, not our power. And so I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. See, that's how, we, that's how you build. But we do it in His power, not our power. His strength, not our strength. Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain to build it. We'll stand together for prayer, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for this psalm and for the help it's been to us, the focus that it gives us, and Lord, the dependence that it reminds us of, that we must have you. Or we cannot, we can't build a life, we can't build a home, we certainly can't build a church. So, Lord, we ask you to build our lives, build our homes, build our marriages, build our relationships, build your church. Lord, we'll labor, we'll watch, we'll take the blessings of our children that you've given to us and we'll use them as arrows. We will direct them and sharpen them and keep them straight. Lord, I pray you'd use them to do great things for you. If you tarry your coming, Lord, that some of the young people that are in this room tonight or downstairs this evening would do far greater things than what we've ever seen in our lifetime. Help us to do what we ought to do and help us to rely on you and have dependence upon you. Help us not just to try harder. Help us to trust you more. And realize that anything we do must be done in your strength and in your power. We love you. We thank you, Lord, for being our God and for desiring to use us and desiring even to desire to build our lives and to build our homes, to build your church. We're thankful we get to be a part of that and to see what you can do. We love you. We pray your blessing now on each individual as they go home tonight. Dismiss us. Make us mindful of your presence as we go. Lord, I thank you for Sally, and I pray you'll give her safety as she travels back down to Florida. Lord, continue to have your hand upon her life and prosper her in every way as she continues to serve you with her life. We pray it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing, Isn't He Wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful, isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Let's hear you sing. Ready? Uh, isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus, my Lord, wonderful? God bless you. You're dismissed.